We're here now at Brandon Theaters watching Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. These types of movies is, by definition, a popcorn movie, which is mindless explosions of fun eating snacks. That's exactly what this movie is. It's gonna be literally like good guy, bad guy, maybe a slight little twist, a ton of action, ton of explosions, a lot of disbelief that you, you would say, but that's okay because it's a popcorn movie. Going into it when you know it's just like, yeah, it's gonna be something fun, something entertaining, then you sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. I will preface this by saying I am a huge Vin Diesel fan, and it tends to be that whatever he touches, I like. I like the style of his movies, especially his modern movies. He's got his touch all over it. I really, I really enjoy them. So I was one of the few people in our group, actually I'm the only person in our group that was looking forward to seeing this movie. And we watched the original movie as part of our throwback review. So if you want to see that, it'll be on the channel uploaded around the same time as this review. But I was excited about both of them. I wanted to go back and watch the old one, and I wanted to see this one. Now I will say, this movie and the older movie, the first movie, were really different. They're really different. Uh, whereas the first movie was James Bond to the extreme X game. This isn't that. This has more in common with the Fast and the Furious franchise than I think it does the original Triple X franchise, the original Triple X movie. Two kinds of movies that get released in January. First, our Oscar contender quality films that had a limited release in December and are getting a wider release in January. Then we have our studio dump this out because they didn't really want to compete with anything in the summer or the actual winter. What I'm going to see a movie called Triple X The Return of Xander Cage, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the former category. The surprise for me is it actually doesn't really belong in the second category either. I was genuinely surprised by this movie. Didn't have a lot of high expectations, obviously, but the writing was actually way better than the first Triple X movie. That's not a huge compliment, but nonetheless, I actually found myself enjoying the film. Soundtrack was good. I enjoyed the music uh, selection choices. I, I enjoyed the roster of characters. Obviously, when they do something like this, you want an hour with each one, almost like a TV series. Like, I want an episode for each character to thoroughly flesh them out, but you're not going to get that. You're going to get kind of like, here are some bullet points, here's what they can do. Now we're going to put them in the fray so you can see what they can do. Each character they showed, and there were a lot of them. I liked every one of them. Their personality, even the ones that didn't get a whole lot of time on camera, I enjoyed the character. I wanted to see more of the character, and that's the key to this kind of movie. When you have an ensemble movie where, you know, everybody's coming together to save the world or whatever it might be, you want interesting characters. Characters. That's the key. If the, inter the characters are interesting and they mesh well together, then that carries the movie. I'm not saying this movie had an excellent story. I'm not saying this movie was particularly well acted. I'm not saying that some of the lines weren't extremely cringeworthy and cheesy, but that's just what this movie is. If you saw that they were making another Triple X movie and you're like, that's gonna have a really intelligent plot, you probably didn't understand what Triple X is really about. This is supposed to be kind of a cheesy, just fun romp. Just go in, turn your brain off, enjoy the action, enjoy the jokes, and just strap yourself in. That's the whole concept behind this movie. The three main characters of the film are actually the brightest spots. Of course, we've got Vin Diesel, the lead female actress whose name I definitely am not going to pronounce correctly, no matter how I try. Donnie Yen from Rogue One. Really incredible. Super exciting to watch him, his action in this film. Took me back a little bit to almost like Jackie Chan uh, era, but a little more hyper. Really enjoyed that. Tony Collette playing a little bit different character here as our sort of government agent. Just suitably enjoyable. Samuel Jackson, one of those things for me seals the deal for most anything. You, you can give you the most like crappiest whatever, but then you got Samuel Jackson. So he's in there. I enjoy that. Of course, if you're thinking, well, wait, I saw the first one, the second one, and certain things happened and dialogue wise, don't worry. The movie addresses those. And for me, that's an important thing. I hate it. Absolutely hate it when movies have like a one, two, three, four. And let's say between two and three, they almost forgot like one or two even happened or this was even a thing. This one totally addresses the different couple of things that were said in one and two or happened in one and two so for me it's like cool you're acknowledging the fact that these other things happen and it wasn't just ah we'll forget about it like how movies do like a hard reboot acknowledging the first one but forgetting the stuff in the middle so i appreciated that i will say i feel that this movie is better than the original movie they've learned a lot mainly from the fast and the furious movies on what works and what doesn't and they kind of stole a lot from that formula but hey it's not broke don't fix it right that's kind of what they did they're like this works let's use it we had a, a bigger crowd than i thought we would in the theater if we're seeing an opening night and 
And I just expected no one but us. I didn't think this movie had a lot of buzz. I didn't think that people really cared, but I was surprised to see that we had a bigger crowd than we usually have, which leads me to have hope that we'll see more of these movies and that we'll see this, this series go further because I'd like to see it go further. I want to see more of the characters. I want to see more of the action. I want to see more of this over-the-top concept where every single stunt done could never happen in real life, but no one cares. A good example of kind of the idea of this movie, so you're, you're going in with the right mindset. After the movie, we were kind of having fun poking plot holes in it, and it didn't really matter. It didn't really bother any of us. It's not that kind of movie that you really got sweat in the details. It was just kind of fun to, to explore around the movie after the fact. A lot of things you're probably going to see coming, again, didn't bother me because it was a pretty fun romp. The characters are wacky, crazy, pretty interesting. Doesn't mean there aren't also some super annoying cliches. We've got the bespectacled, frizzy, long-haired, ditzy, klutzy girl that's the tech person that's too afraid of guns and the bad guys. We have the biker chick sniper with the short purplish blue hair that talks a little dirty. It can great. So with all that said, I might be slightly a little generous with this score, but I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. I enjoyed it. I had fun watching it. If I had another group of friends that wanted to go see it or just to waste time and eat some snacks and watch explosions and gunfights, absolutely. It's not like it's an award-winning thing. It's not like it's one of those movies that's gonna change your life. It's just fun. So I'm gonna judge this movie based off of of the entertainment value and what it was trying to accomplish, uh, which is what I usually judge movies on. Based off what this movie was, what they were trying to make, and what they presented, I actually think it did an extremely good job. I'm gonna give this movie a 9 out of 10. Now that doesn't mean that if you take a 9 out of 10 movie that's this, and you compare it to a 9 out of 10 movie drama, this was made as well as that drama, it's not that at all. This movie was just extremely entertaining for what it was. Uh, I would pick this up and watch it again, and I definitely wanna see another one. Really, the worst parts of the film are sort of the same as the worst parts of the original Triple X film. It kind of feels like you're at a tattoo convention and everyone is just showing off like how many they have and that's what makes them so cool. And in order to do that, everybody has to wear like no clothing at all. Pretty much you've got scantily clad women in every inch of the screen for 90% of the film. Not exactly the most empowering female presentation, I would add. And it just gets kind of old with that. All told, I did enjoy enjoy this movie. I did have a fun time. There were downsides, of course, so it's not a total recommendation. Overall, 7 out of 10 for me. Favorite this video? Like it. Hit that subscribe button for more reviews like this, plus throwbacks, unboxing videos, Pokemon card things. Soon I'm going to test some blind pack toy things just to see. Do that. You get to see it all unfold before your very eyes. Great year. A lot of stuff planned. Question for you this week. What is your favorite Vin Diesel movie? So curious to know what you think is your best favorite Vin. And remember, you heard it here at The Source.